make sure I don't hit leave meeting. Hi, this is Boomer Tech Adventures, and this is a, another session of Ask BTA. This is Boomer Tech Guide Chris Toy. I'm here with Jill Spencer and Ed Brzee, and uh, this is where the three of us talk about some of the questions that uh, come to us from time to time. And uh, today's uh, session is going to be about uh, storage space and uh, how we can manage that and how it might affect um, your device. And we'll primarily be talking about um, iPhones and iPads, but we'll also be uh, talking a little bit about cloud storage and apps and things like that. So I'll get started. And um, I got a, uh, a, an email the other day uh, from, from a friend and he said, hey, did you know that your voicemail is no longer accepting messages because it says your voicemail box is full? And um, I didn't know that because I never call myself <laughs> uh, and try to leave messages. So um, I had to figure out how to, how, to, how to rectify that. So it turns out that it's actually pretty simple to do this and I'll just kind of walk us through it. So, uh, you know, you have your phone app, so you just uh, click on that. That's the uh, green icon uh, with the phone. And when you tap on that, up in the, um, in, in the, in the bottom right-hand corner, not up, but down at the bottom right, uh, you should see um, something that says voicemail. And you'll tap on that. And uh, from there, you can um, swipe on your voicemail, uh, swipe from, um, from right to left. And uh, you'll see some options. One of them will be delete. And you'll just tap on that. It'll ask you to confirm, and then you can just tap delete. And you can do that, you know, uh, one by one uh, for for all of the emails that you want to delete. Now, if you want to be more efficient, because we like to be efficient in doing this, if we just want to delete them all at once, um, if you tap on edit in the top right hand corner, the list of your voicemails will come up. And then what you can do is simply tap on the little circles beside each of the voicemails and then hit delete. So then you'll be able to select them all, you know, in bulk and, and delete them kind of in one fell swoop. But there is one more step after you do that. And that is um, at the bottom of the screen, you'll tap on deleted messages. And what will come up is the option to clear all on the top right of the screen. And if you tap on that, they will all be completely gone um, forever, and they'll be taking up no space anywhere. So that's, that's and, and you, you know, it's a good idea um, to just kind of check, you know, your voicemail from time to time so you don't end up missing, um, you know, someone leaving you a, a voicemail because your, uh, your, your mailbox is full. Now, the other thing you can do is you can, if, if there's a, a voicemail that you want to actually save it and still empty out your, your uh, voicemail box, um, if you tap on the, um, if you select that voicemail, uh, one of the options that you'll get is to, sh to share that. You know, so that's the little um, square icon with the arrow that points straight up. If you tap on that, you'll get the option to send that to yourself 
in an email as a voice file. And then you'll, 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 it'll take it out of your voicemail, not out of it. It will send it from your voicemail uh, to, to a uh, message uh, to yourself. And then you can do what you want with it from there, but you'll get it out of your voicemail if you want to do that. So that's, that's how you can save some space um, on your, on your phone and specifically on your voicemail. So what, what, what other uh, ways do we have that we can manage or save space on our devices? Jill? Well, I think it's important that we review the difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, storage in iCloud and storage on your device. Uh, they're two different things. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll talk about that for a couple minutes. Here we go. Yep. All right. So let me open this. So you have a device, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone, and it comes with a specific amount of storage, which you cannot change. So right now I'm in settings. You can see, uh, just pull it, whoops, that's not what you wanna see. Pull this over a little bit. I'm in settings and I've scrolled down to general. And when I tap on general, one of my options is iPad storage. And this will tell me how much storage I have used on my device. So let me go to the second one here. So when I tap on right there, tap on that little arrow, then this pops up. And you can see that up here, iPad, I've used 72.5 gigabytes of 128 gigabytes used that I have on my device. I made that decision how much storage I would have on this device when I bought it. And so my rule of thumb is uh, I get as much storage as I can afford. Now, if you look at the bar graph, you can see that mo most of my used gigabytes are in apps. Then I have quite a few in photos, media, and then other things. Jill, now, Jill excuse yeah. me, that, um, when you open up that, P, the PNG hasn't opened up, we're not seeing the, the bar graph. Oh, bummer. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I get, I'm, so it's not sharing my screen. Well, I guess I'll just have to talk you through it then. Yeah, we can follow you along. I'm looking at my, my phone while you're talking, so that's helpful. Okay, I thought it would share the screen. Well, live and learn, right? Yep. So, all right, so you open up your device, you open up settings, you go to general, and it either will say iPad or iPhone uh, storage, and you click on that and you'll see a bar graph, and it will tell you how much storage you've used. And again, on your device storage, you cannot expand that. Under it are recommendations for uh, looking at that storage and looking for ways to um, save some space. So as I was saying, most of mine seem to be used up on apps. That's because when I was still traveling and working with schools, I had a lot of education apps on them. Well, I don't have, I don't use those anymore. So I really need to um, go through and delete those sorts of things. Now, there's also iCloud storage. This is expandable as Apple is willing to sell you space, additional space in their cloud. And so the where you find that when you open up settings, and I wish I could show you, but when you open up settings, up at the top, you'll see your name. And so you tap on that. 
And once you tap on that, the new screen about a quarter of the way down or a third of the way down, you will see the word iCloud. So you tap on that. And once again, another bar graph will appear and it will show you how much storage you have left in iCloud. Now, if you could see my screen, you would see that I have quite a bit because I have upped my iCloud storage three times. <laughs> I have multiple Apple devices and uh, I have lots of things stored on them. Everybody gets five gigabytes of free cloud storage. Now that's not per device, that's across all your devices. So if you have a, a computer and an iPad and an iCloud, you can fill up that five gigabytes pretty fast. But again, um, there's an option to manage your storage. You just click on that and you have the ability to add um, additional cloud space. And it's not too expensive. I will tell you that the terabytes is now $10 a month. But before that, when I just went up to the first level, it was $1 a month, so $12 a year. It, wasn't, it was not outrageous. Uh, the terabytes is a little more expensive and I probably should be a little bit better about getting rid of videos and photos. Anyway, so I just want you to know, once again, that there's a difference between iCloud storage, which you can expand, and this, the storage on your actual device, which is set. That makes sense? It does. And just a word about the, the money. I started out with the free one. I went, I used that up pretty fast and went to the 299, which was how, how much, what, how many gigabytes was that, Jill? I don't remember right offhand. Whatever it was. And now I'm up to the two terabytes, 10 bucks a month. They have a family plan, so I share it with my wife. So that's, I figure that's $5 a month a piece. And it's just so much easier than having to worry about getting rid of stuff I don't need, which I should probably do. But it's, it's still very doable, I think. Yeah, I mean, the other benefit of that is that you, uh, you don't have to be concerned about your, your drive crashing because, um, you know, pretty much any company that has cloud storage has redundancy built in. So you don't actually lose something, you know, whether your, you know, device, you know, falls into the ocean or, um, you know, the dog eats it or something like that. Um, so that's, that's a, that's kind of like an insurance policy there against uh, loss of files. And, you know, yeah. once you lose the pictures um, or the, or the movies, um, it's pretty tough to get, get those back. Right. Or, or to be in a frustrating situation where I, Jill, I think, talked about being in on our African safari several years ago and trying to download pictures and then being told she didn't have enough storage space and you don't want to have to, at a point where you really want to have total access to your device, you don't have to worry about the storage piece. That's right, because I actually could not take a picture until right. I did something about it. Right, yeah. Um, so you have to go back to Africa. Right, there we go. <laughs> now I had another camera with me, so it was okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to just move over to the, um, to the Mac and talk just briefly about that. Um, and I'll, we'll, I'll talk you through that. So most people on a Mac are um, familiar with the Apple icon on the left-hand side again like what, as Jill and Chris just explained, how to figure out how much storage you have. It's always nice to be proactive about this uh, by paying attention to, to what's actually there. So if you click on the Apple icon and, and just simply hit about this Mac, it gives you a, um, a little box with uh, five different uh, tabs at the top the tab you really want is the middle one, and that's storage. And what that does, that opens up for your Mac hard drive, and it talks about how much uh, flash storage you're using and how much um, 
is still available. And even more importantly, is something called, there's a little, a little uh, tab there called Manage. So you can manage your storage that takes you into another section where it shows you what the large files are on your, um, on your computer all in one place. And I found out, not surprisingly, because in Boomer Tech, we all use a lot of, um, we're making a lot of movies. Um, I have 60 gigabytes in my iMovie library um, from all the Boomer Tech stuff that we do. Um, Chris, I am kind of surprised my second largest uh, <clears throat> file here is making fresh ramen noodles, an MP4 <laughs> file from Chris. <laughs> which is, I'm not sure why it's so large, it's eight gigabytes. But anyway, you can, you can find out what the large files are and then you can decide whether you need to keep those or get rid of those. There are also tabs here for downloads, something called unsupported apps, containers, and file browsers, but it gives you a way so that you're not just randomly searching through your files to get rid of things, it shows you uh, where the big files are and, and makes it very easy to do. So uh, again, as with the iPhone and iPad, we recommend you know what you're dealing with in terms of storage. You mentioned download. Somebody reminded me, um, oh, I don't know, a year ago, I really ought to um, drag and drop my download items to the trash and empty it because they take up space too. Right. Because if I've downloaded them, I've probably also either looked at it and gotten the information I needed or saved it somewhere else. But to actually um, clean that out on occasion, because yeah. sometimes yeah. I get quite a few downloads there. Yeah, they're, they're smaller, but um, they're still there and they still take up. The other one that I was surprised, kind of surprised about I don't do a great job of cleaning up my desktop. In fact, I keep very too many files on, and I found out that on my desktop I had uh, 21 gigabytes in terms of files, and those really should be in my in my documents, uh, not not just kept on the on the desktop. That's just just lazy housekeeping, but something I'm going to do better at. I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, you know, one question that comes up often when people are are um, trying to make space and deleting their apps is how to do that, and you know what happens to those apps that get deleted. Mm. And um, maybe we could talk about that. I'll, I can kind of address the issue of what happens to apps. Uh, what, what we know is that once you download an app, um, it literally it, it gets stored both on the cloud and on your device. And uh, when you do the uh, process for taking the app off of your um, device, um, even though it's gone from your device and is not taking up any space or using you know, any bandwidth, um, you can still search your cloud and you can re-download um, that app. If you purchased it, you don't have to rebuy it. You, you haven't lost it. Uh, you simply taking it off your device. Um, and when you go to the app store, you see that little cloud with the downward facing arrow and you just download it again if you decide you need it, right? I'm incorrect on that, I think. Yes, yep, yep, uh, because, and, and um, when you, when you, um, at least when I, when I upgraded my phone, um, I found that, uh, several of the apps that were on my old phone did not go over to my new phone. Um, so I remember like my um, bird watching app wasn't on my new phone. And when I tried to use it, um, it gave me a prompt to, do you want to, you know, download this? Yeah. And I was able to, you know, pretty quickly, if you're on Wi-Fi, 
uh, just to download that and use it. If you're if you're on a cellular network, it, it could take a while simply because it's not the same bandwidth as being on Wi-Fi. Um, maybe someone could talk about how to make the uh, the apps dance around with the X and and all that stuff or deleting them. Jill, go yeah. ahead, and then we'll wrap it up after that. Okay, so um, let me just get. So if you want to um, make your apps dance and each have an X, all you have to do these days is touch your screen with a long press and they'll start to dance. And um, they will have, well, right now I'm looking at it because I've upgraded to um, iOS 15. Uh, what I see instead of an X, there is a circle with a minus sign. Let's see what happens when I press the minus sign. Ah, what I get is, do you want to remove, delete the app, remove it, or just remove it from the home screen? So mm. I can make a choice. So you just have to touch, don't even have to touch an icon, just um, touch, do a long press on your screen. They'll start to dance. You press on the circle with either an X or a minus and you'll see your, your options. And then to stop them dancing, um, I have a, a 10 phone, so I just sweep up. Um, if you have something earlier than a 10, I've forgotten what you do. Just press this, anyway, you tap it again and it'll stop dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Before we end, I just had one thought that I'd never thought about. And that is that we all text and we send pictures and videos. And I'm very sloppy about removing those, but they're also taking up space on our device. And so if you start to get messages about, um, to, you know, you're running out of space, go in and look at your messages, your texts and uh, start deleting pictures and videos. You can have the option to save them to your Photos app, but if you don't really want them, get rid of them because they're taking up space. Okay, I'm done. And, and also make sure you're signed into iCloud on all your devices. So right. a lot of this stuff is being saved in the cloud, not on your, on your device. Um, thanks, Let's, we'll go ahead and wrap up then. Um, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, we are Boomer Tech Adventures, and you can find us online. We've got a redesigned website that we're pretty proud of that we think provides a lot more information for you at boomertechadventures.com. We have a very active presence, a lot of videos, helpful tutorials on our YouTube channel, also at Boomer Tech Adventures. And um, finally, our new um, membership community called BTA Club, where you have direct access to us uh, for lots of, lots of help with your great tech questions and issues. So for Boomer Tech Adventures, this is Ed and Jill and Chris for Ask BTA, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>